Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. Right, Saturday afternoon here in Australia. Market still kind of hovering around that kind of one point seven trillion dollar mark. We are up ever so slightly, which is nice. But you know, now the weekend's upon us. Are we going to see a bit of a sell off? Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Bitcoin dominance forty percent has come down ever so slightly, but still just hovering at forty percent. Uh, volumes down. Uh, not to be expected. The options expiries weren't uh, really, they weren't bad at all. I thought they were going to be worse and we'd see a big drop. It didn't happen, but that's not to say it still can't sort of come over this weekend. We'll have to wait and see. And now longer, not because of the options, just because it simply gets pushed down. Well, that's what I'm really waiting to see, whether we're going to have a big push down over this weekend. So far, hasn't happened. Right, Ethereum gas price is down to $5, which is really nice. Now, there's a few no news stories I want to get through today, and then I'm going to have a look at some of the altcoins that I like and I've been buying. Not recently. Like I said, I'm not buying too much. I did buy some uh, an altcoin just today a little bit, and I'll show you why. But again, I'm not going too crazy because I'm still just unsure of exactly where the markets are going. So we'll get to that shortly. But let's first have a look. What's done well in the last 24 hours, top 100, considering the market's up ever so slightly? Right, Flow's done extremely nice. $6 Celsius Network has had a good one. Poker Network, Bora Club. Uh, was it BitCub Coin? I don't even know what that is. Stack. So look, there's a couple of movers there, which is really nice. A uh, couple of double-digit movers, a couple of high single-digit movers, and then we're just really into the mid to kind of low single-digit movers. Any gain's a good gain though, right? You take any gain over a loss any day, but nothing too major. And again, that stands to reason because the market's traveling mostly sideways. So what hasn't fared well in the last 24 hours? All right, Luna uh, having a bit of trouble there. There's been some uh, troubles with one of the core developers was caught up in uh, some of the Wonderland stuff and things like that. So that's had a bit of an effect on the Terra Luna price. Although, again, we'll have a look at that. It's looking uh, interesting at the moment. Osmosis is down. Axie Infinity is down. But look, nothing really major except for the BitTorrent one. That really, really hurts. So that's down a fair bit. Uh, and then the rest of them, and that just quickly changed. So something's going on with uh, BitTorrent, maybe getting wash traded or something. But look, not a lot of losses there, and just the same as there's not a lot of gains. Uh, and again, that's what happens in a sideways traveling market. So make with that what you will. All right. So when we have a look at these coins, they're all going to be in order of the weighting that I have them, except for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin has lost uh, its ground in number one because Ethereum has done so well. Uh, but Bitcoin was my number one when I first started and it's not too far off in all fairness But anyway having a look as we can see Maybe the bottom was in maybe that kind of 30. What was it? 33,000. Yep 33,000 was the capitulation event, but we have seen it kind of roll over before this is not uncommon rolled over rolled over rolled over rolled over rolled over so yeah, I'm just unsure at the moment there's no kind of real bullish news out there that I've seen in markets in general because, you know, it, it, we can have this amazing news in cryptocurrencies, but if all the other markets continue to tank, then unfortunately, eventually, uh, it will catch up in cryptocurrencies. All markets are correlated. Don't ever let anyone tell you they're not. It's just the level of correlation, whether it's high or low. And Bitcoin has a fairly low correlation to some of the bigger markets. But when the big markets all take a turn for the worst, then all markets just sort of follow suit, particularly the S&P 500. That's really a good one to look at. If that's not traveling well, quite often other markets won't travel well. It's not that they can't be outliers, but it's just how long it will last, particularly if the S&P 500 gets hit really hard all the other markets will follow suit. Again, it's just the level of that correlation, but all markets are correlated. It's just, you know, whether it's high correlation or low correlation. At least that's my personal opinion. That's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but that's what I've seen. So at the moment, this is looking good. You know, we're slowly building and maybe we can just kind of hold around this $37,000 level. Maybe we've still got some more pain to come. I don't know. But what I know is when Bitcoin dips down to that kind of $33,000 level, it gets bought up aggressively. I mean, look at that. <sighs> bought up when it got down there. Bought up when it got down there. Bought up. And even when it's trying to push down here uh, into the 35s at the moment, it's being bought up. It's just about will it last now. 
All right, so yeah, like I said, I've set my buy orders and I keep buying Bitcoin and I still DCA into Bitcoin every sort of week, fortnight when I get my money. I still put a little bit into Bitcoin and as it gets cheaper, I actually like to buy more of it. I'm never going to go too crazy because if we're in a bear market and we've got a long way further down to go, then I just want to constantly have cash on the side. But I'm happy to buy Bitcoin in the 30,000s compared to wanting to buy it in the 60s and 70,000s. So I am dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. I am dollar cost averaging into Ethereum. They're my two really, you know, my highest conviction uh, plays, I guess. Still a little bit worried about Ethereum 2.0, but I think it will get there. Hence why I dollar cost average into Ethereum. But I probably, I'm putting more into Bitcoin, but only fractionally. Uh, and again, out of my DCA at the moment, I'm not even putting in like 50% of my DCA into anything at the moment. It's mainly just holding in cash on the sides until I see a real kind of turn. And look, here's the truth. I need to see Bitcoin get above 50, sort of 3,000, let's say. If we can get above that, I'll be confident that we're back in a bull market. Unfortunately, we can have pumps all the way up and then it just rolls over and we go down lower. So for me at the moment, it's bit by bit, all right, can we get above sort of $41,000? Let's say we do, all right, sweet. Can we then get above, you know, kind of 45,000? We can, sweet. All right, then can we get above, let's say, you know, let's just round it up to 50,000. Sweet. Can we then get above, again, basically sort of 53,000, let's say 53,000, sort of 100 thereabouts. Can we get above that? Awesome. Then I would think, yes, the chances are highly likely. Now, again, we can have a triple top. One, two, who knows? We could have it come up to here and then go all the way down again. No one knows. We're in kind of uncharted territory at the moment. But for me, either way, Bitcoin at a discount, any kind of discount I like, but the bigger the discount, i.e. 50%, which is the kind of retracement we've basically had, we're at you know, a little bit above 35,000 from basically 70,000, 50% discount. So it sounds good to me. And the lower it goes, the more I'm going to be happy to buy it. Not the happier I'll be about my overall overall portfolio because it's going to obviously get brutalized. But I know Bitcoin will turn around and find its way back up eventually. And that's when the gains will become exponential because I've continued to buy. I haven't stopped buying, but I've t tried to take some calculated measures about how I buy. Like I said, when I feel like we really have had a bottoming formation, then I'll probably deploy more cash towards it. But with the altcoins, just chipping away at things ever so slowly, but not really focusing on, on them too much. Right, Ethereum, let's have a look. How's Ethereum doing? It's got something similar. It just seems to have found a little bit of support and it is slowly pushing up. But again, it doesn't. it's not looking great. It's just not looking awful at the moment. So now we've got to wait and see. Can this kind of, you know, 2,400-ish dollar level, you know, kind of around about here, can that hold? Or, can, or is it just going to roll over and then unfortunately we have to push down to some lower prices? That's what I'm waiting for. So again, I am dollar cost averaging into Ethereum at the moment. Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're kind of my fortnightly buys pretty much... Not, they are my fortnightly buys all the time. It's just dependent on where they are. When they're at all-time highs, I'm not putting as much into anything when they're at all-time highs. I don't want to chase. I would rather wait for a big retracement uh, and start to buy more. That's just the way I do it. You've got to work out what's good for you. But again, this was at, you know near $5,000, and I can currently buy it for $2,500. It's a 50% discount, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to buy it. And if it goes to a 60, 70, 80, 90% discount, then even better. I'm much happier buying it at those prices. Because I have my, you know, my belief can't be shaken, at least at the moment. You know, there's always something that could come that could shake my belief that would make me think, well, it's not going to make it. And then I'd have to, you know, obviously, you know, change my course of thought and my theory and all that and then sell. But I believe Ethereum's going to make it. I believe Bitcoin's going to make it. And in the long run, they're going to be worth a whole lot more. So does it hurt watching my portfolio go down? Uh, yes, absolutely, like everyone else. But all I can think of is I am buying, you know, what in my mind is quality at really cheap prices. And I have no doubt that, again, let's say by somehow 
Ethereum gets down to, I don't know, $500, considering it was at four, you know, basically $5,000. Yeah, my portfolio overall is going to look terrible because it's going to have dropped so much in value. But I know when Ethereum starts to go back up and gets above $5,000 again, and maybe then goes to $10,000, $20,000, whatever it may go to, Again, because I've bought all the way down and continued to buy all the way up until we start to get close to 5,000 and then I'll start to ease off a little bit. My dollar value will have, you know, increase exponentially and I'm not bullish on the dollar long term. I'm only bullish on the dollar short term. There's times where you definitely need some, hence why I've got, you know, some stable coin uh, yield farming sort of stuff going on. I absolutely do that, but I'd rather put it into assets that I feel literally over the long term will only kind of go up other than yep they'll be super volatile in between that's my kind of theory and so that's why i you know like to invest in cryptocurrencies again i've said this not all of them are going to make it i'm going to be investing in ones right now that just aren't going to make it so be it but i think bitcoin is as sure a thing as you can find and particularly in cryptocurrencies i think ethereum is not too far off and some of these other ones that we're going to look at i think have big futures ahead of them but i could be wrong so again that's why i tell you i'm never going to offer you financial advice i'm only ever going to give you my personal opinion you, you got to do your own sort of research take my advice take some other people's advice read some white papers you know get on some discords and things like that and join twitter and you know make up your own thesis from there that's where generally people do the best as long as they you know they have some sound money uh, kind of theories and understand that you know chucking everything into random sort of you know highly speculative stuff is just gambling that's not investing uh, you know and unfortunately for some people they'll just never be able to do that so be very very careful but I find if you got a little bit of intelligence it's not all that hard to do what some of these big players do. And you, and you learn as you go through. You make a few mistakes. But like I said, as long as you're not making stupid plays, like getting all your money and throwing it, throwing it into one thing, that's where you're going to get burnt and hurt. Outside of that, uh, this game isn't that hard. It's just what kind of level you do it at. And again, for me, I'm not a trader. I'm more an investor. I do some occasional swing trading. But the investing route just seems a whole lot easier for me. And... DCA, dollar cost averaging, week in, week out, or fortnightly or monthly or whatever it is you're doing, or daily, is proven to be the best method. It'll beat 99% of traders and it'll beat uh, you know, 99% of basically everyone else. It's just the most easiest and consistent way. But that's if what you're investing in is doing well. Something to keep in mind. All right, so let's have a look at the total market cap. Again, same kind of thing. I showed you this the other day. It looked like we were forming this little thing and we're ready for a breakout. But it looked red and then it did turn green and now we're on another green one and at the top so things aren't looking too bad but it's much the same as the bitcoin chart let's see if we can get back above sort of you know 1.9 trillion dollars before i get kind of too carried away and then again then we got to get up to about here so two point you know two trillion dollars let's say and then again we got to get up to around about here 2.4 2.5 trillion dollars and if we can get above that then I will start to believe that, yeah, the bull runs back on because we can have all this amazing growth all the way up to around about here and then up it just falls off and goes lower. Keep that in mind. All right, a couple of stories I want to look at. So data shows young Bitcoin addresses sold 36% of their holdings at a loss. So that's a lot of what's going on. A lot of the new people come here and they unfortunately get caught up in leverage and things like that. And then they take out loans. And that's also what else has happened. A lot of people got margin called of late. So if you got your Bitcoin, put it all into something and then took a loan out against it and didn't have anything else to back it up and then it dropped and you got the margin call and couldn't put more funds in to cover it, then you lost that Bitcoin. You got the dollars or whatever you had that, uh, you, you know, you sort of put it up against and you hope that that did well because if it didn't do well, well, then you're really, you know, up shit creek without a paddle, they say. So this is, you know, this is what happens. A lot of new people come into the space. Uh, unfortunately, they get caught up in leverage or again, they make silly decisions and take out loans at really bad times. Like if you're going to take a loan on cryptocurrencies and I don't recommend doing it, at all i haven't done it i'm not doing it you know maybe sometime in the future i'll take small loans i'll never take you know too much that i could you know get liquidated and things like that 
But if there was a time I was going to do it, it'd be at the absolute bottom of the bear market. That's where I'd want to do it because that's where the chance of it going much lower than it already is, is slim, let alone getting liquidated and the exponential growth comes from there. It's doing all that stuff at the bottom, ladies and gentlemen, that you're going to make the crazy gains unless you can just somehow fluke it and again, get in at this time when it goes really parabolic and then get out and all the rest of it. And that's just too hard. But this is what's been happening lately. Uh, you know, it's the people who bought recently and it's dropped, you know, significantly. 50% is a big loss to take, although I've, you know, taken that and more on occasions. And they just get out and get liquidated and, you know, get margin called and all that. And that's where these big sell-offs are coming. The big players are not selling. They're accumulating but that doesn't mean that there's not more pain to come. So keep that in mind. All right, Cardano investors holding between 10,000 and 1 million coins more than doubled their ADA bags since the market correction began. So again, goes to show big, you know, big holders with a lot, fair bit of money are buying these coins. Again, not to say they can't go lower and, you know, a bit more pain be felt but they are looking more long-term and going, all right, where's this been going over the years? And they go back and have a look at the charts and we will look at Cardano, but very interesting. So people buying up Cardano. Right, more DeFi hacks. This is why I really stay away from you know new DeFi projects and I just like to focus on some of the older ones that have been around. They might not be the Gucciest, may not be offering the best returns. They may seem like they're kind of dead price-wise, uh, but, you know, if you go and check their discords and that, there's still ones that are doing quite well. And we'll have a look at one that I still really like. But De Bitcoin Smart Chain, sorry, based DeFi project, Qubit Finance, exploited for $80 million in Binance coin. You just hope they've got a treasury that can kind of back that up and people haven't just simply lost their money. But again, this is why I steer clear of all these new DeFi projects. I'd rather wait and see that they have some good history and put money into them then just jump into all these new projects and you know again it becomes like gambling maybe they do well maybe they don't you know yeah you got to do you i'm just telling you that i don't go jumping in particularly with DeFi. it's just too too risky at the moment uh they're quite complex smart contracts with all the things that go on so you want to make sure that the teams behind them are really really good all right moving on all right, users have been flocking to Curve amid lack of stablecoin liquidity on major DEXs. So again, you've got to be careful with all these new projects. So magic internet money. Someone was swapping a million dollars in magic internet money and were only getting 730000 in USDC on Uniswap. Now, it's to do with the liquidity and things like that and the slippage. There just wasn't enough money. I don't know much about magic internet money. I know people have talked about it. But just the name straight up puts me off magic internet money do you want to have magic money or do you want to have real money unfortunately the name yeah for me at least it spells it out i don't want anything that makes it sound like it's fake and fugazi and magic and you know potions and witchcraft and all that kind of stuff just not for me but again this is the problem you know you start adding liquidity into things and automatic uh, money makers and things like that and all of a sudden someone who's a big player pulls their money out and then there's just not enough liquidity left for you to get your money out for the price that it even may say that it's worth. And I'm not saying that's what's happened here, but it does go to show, just be careful. So people have been moving to Curve. Curve's been around for a long time. Great stable coin aggregator with low slippage and things like that. Now again, I'm not, I'm not recommending it and I'm not not recommending it because I do kind of like Curve, but you got to make your own mind up. But, you know, all these new projects, the liquidity usually is not that much and it doesn't take much for the liquidity to dry up really, really quickly. And then even though, again, on paper, it says you got a million dollars in magic internet money. All right, cool. And now all of a sudden you've lost a quarter of it. And look, if you've only lost a quarter, that's not so bad unless you unfortunately paid a million or more for it and then you're trying to get your money out and you've so you've already paid more than a million for it and now you can only get seven hundred and thirty thousand uh back for what you've got so yeah 
Very careful, ladies and gentlemen. All right, this is interesting. So a senator from Arizona has introduced a bill to make Bitcoin legal tender. This is making the rounds at the moment. I don't think it'll get up. I uh, could be wrong. We'll have to wait and see because the Constitution just doesn't allow for it. But it's interesting that someone has come and tried to do this. I mean, we know, we know El Salvador's done it. I think Texas is also looking at doing something like that. There's other countries that are also looking to get onto the Bitcoin standard. I really do think in the next few years, you're really going to start to things see things take off. You know, it's that whole trickle, trickle flood. And everyone thinks, oh, well, trickle, trickle, like it's only two trickles and then it's got a flood. No, it's, you know, trickle, 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 trickle. It can take quite a long time and, you know, then just slowly starts to get bigger and bigger. It doesn't just happen overnight. So we could still be, you know, three, four, five years away from things really happening like super fast. But they already are happening sort of super fast because it was only, you know, before El Salvador, there was no country that had it as legal tender. And El Salvador has done it and now other countries are looking to do it and now even states are looking to do it. And we know big family offices are buying Bitcoin and, you know, big companies are buying Bitcoin. It really won't be long until it all just sort of takes off. So yes, the price is not looking great at the moment. If you bought at 60,000, uh, if you bought under where we are now, then it's still looking good and it's just a buying opportunity. But again, that's based on your own you know, risk tolerances and things like that. But I like where things are heading. I think this is very, very interesting. All right, Barstool Sports. Dave Portnoy, he's gotten back into Bitcoin. So he dropped a cool million and bought 29 Bitcoin. He may be lucky this time and have bought at a really good price because he bought it before and then it went up and then it went down and then he panicked and sold it for a loss and he's all over the place. So we'll have to wait and see. He, Depending on what price he bought it at, I don't think it went exactly into how much, but again, he said he lost 25K back here. But look, I'm guessing if he's buying at any time right now, he knows that it's basically been twice the price from where it is right now. And hopefully he'll just simply hold long enough to be able to, yeah, make some gains or if it goes lower, we're going to see again whether he's got the stomach to really hold, particularly if Bitcoin does roll over and, you know, go maybe sub 20,000 down to 10,000. Can he uh, stomach that? Not that I think it's going there or I'm saying it's going there, but interesting. All right, the open sea kind of hack that they had, they've refunded $1.8 million into uh, in Ethereum back to the users who lost their NFTs. So basically what happens is you put an NFT uh, for sale uh, it's active for a certain amount of time and then eventually if it sells or there's no deal done then it goes inactive well those prices can stay for months to a year later and what happened is people were able to uh, navigate the system in OpenSea and go and buy some expensive uh, NFTs for really really cheap prices uh, because they were once active now inactive but someone was able to come back in and say, all right, I think they bought a Board 8 Yacht Club for like 0.6 of an Ethereum or something like that. So something absolutely crazy when they're normally selling for a whole lot more. Good to see that uh, OpenSea has refunded them though. Uh, that's nice. Whether that makes up for the loss of the NFTs or not, you know, really, because they're sentimental value and have the prices gone up and down since then. But anyway, good to see they have... Uh, helped out their users. All right, Polygon reaches new milestone of 7,000 uh, dApps and beats Ethereum's daily transaction volume. Uh, that is pretty amazing and is one of the reasons why I really like Polygon. Polygon, its price, uh, it's been up and down, like it was up nearly sort of $3 and now it's around $1.63. We're about to get into that now. It's my third biggest hold. Uh, and I really didn't put that much money into Polygon, but it just did so well. It really is one of those coins that has been unbelievable for me. You know, I wouldn't have believed, you know, you always hear about, you know, someone who basically 100x their money, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Well, Polygon did that for me. Uh, I was lucky enough to buy it at two cents. I even bought some under two cents and I bought some just under three cents. And I've bought more since then, but I really only put a few dollars into Polygon early on and it just, yeah, went ballistic. So this is something that... <sighs> 
I think it's going to be a long-term hold. I, I really do. I just Everything they're doing, uh, Ethereum 2.0 is not really going to be completed for a long, long time, and that's just the truth of it. All the sharding and everything, we're probably still years away. So yes, while the gas prices may come down and things like that, they still won't be Polygon cheap. And as ETH 2.0, and again, it's not ETH 2.0, now what is it, our consensus layer, as ETH consensus layer gets cheaper and cheaper, Guess what happens to Polygon and the other layer twos? They get cheaper and cheaper as well, to the point where people believe that, you know, doing swaps on Polygon, you know, on the L2s, you literally be paying like cents to the dollar, as opposed to now you can be paying 50, 60 cents or a little bit more, uh, and even a couple of dollars, depending on sort of uh, what L2 you're on. So that is very interesting. I really like Polygon. Now let's go and have a look at, again, these co these coins that you're looking at, this is how my portfolio is weighted, except for Ethereum's number one. Bitcoin was number one. My third biggest holding is Matic. Like I said, it just did extremely well. I was lucky enough to buy it for, again, I was buying it down here for like, you know, not quite down here, but I was buying it just under there. So about two to kind of three cents thereabouts is where I picked it up. And now it is trading at a dollar. So excuse me, not as high as where it was at nearly $3, uh, and that's the 100x, but it did really well. But have a look, it's still in this channel. Yep, we dipped below, yep, we broke out, but it is still just big, massive sideways. This just looks like accumulation to me, ladies and gentlemen, at least on the dollar chart. It looks amazing, so you need to make your mind up. Is this a coin that you really like? Do you think it's got long-term value or if you're not a long-term value investor, do you think this is the price you want to get into, you know, try and do a flip? I don't know. I think there's definitely a possibility it might come down lower again. I'd be looking more around kind of here, the dollar uh, 20, dollar kind of 30-ish level, again, to end kind of around there, dollar 40, dollar 30. I'd be putting some buy orders in here. Uh, again, not telling you what to do. But this is where I would be. But it's not to say if your dollar cost averaging here is not a bad price because it is almost halfway in between this box. Not as high as it's been, definitely not as low as it's been, but we just got big accumulation. So very, very interesting. But you don't want to go based on just the dollar. The dollar is not the be all and end all price to tell you how it's doing. How's it holding up against Ethereum? Well, this is where it's a bit different. It's quite high against Ethereum. Now, I've said this before. Ethereum and Bitcoin can get on a run and this can bring it right down. That doesn't mean it loses dollar value, ladies and gentlemen. It just means your money would have been better uh, being put into Bitcoin or Ethereum because we go over to it against Bitcoin and same thing, it's quite high. So Bitcoin and Ethereum, it doesn't look like it's a great buy because it's still really high against them. But on the dollar, looks like mass accumulation. So again, I get the feeling like if things start to pick up, you're going to have Bitcoin and Ethereum go on big runs first. And that'll leave this, you know, it might lose a little bit in its dollar value. Let's say it gets down to $1. twenty or something because Bitcoin and Ethereum are running. But then eventually they will, you know, all the altcoins will basically just get picked up and uh, will rise in price if Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to run. So Matic on the dollar value could be a really good buy, but it's just what, you know, what might happen if Ethereum and Bitcoin get on a run? Would you have been better putting your money into Ethereum or Bitcoin? You need to work out. So dollar value looking interesting, Bitcoin and Ethereum value still a little bit high, but doesn't mean it's not a bad buy. All right, ADA. So this is something that I bought today. And my reasoning is, We've been in this big sideways chop for ages. And look what it does. It goes in these accumulation patterns and eventually it breaks out. And again, you can go back here and there's all sorts of accumulation patterns. But here's the one that we're in and it's been here for a really, really long time. And where is it? Right down the bottom. So I did buy some Cardano today, ADA, whichever one you want to call it. Well, ADA is the coin, Cardano uh, is the network. So I did buy some ADA. Now, can it go lower? Yep. Can it go much lower? Absolutely. Maybe it's going to come back down to two cents. I don't know. I think that's highly unlikely in all fairness. But if it doesn't hold here, I'd be looking at sort of down around about here, 70 cents. And then I'd be looking somewhere down sort of around about here, about 30 cents. Either way, buying at a dollar, knowing that it's been almost as high as sort of $3, that sounds like a pretty good buy to me, ladies and gentlemen. 
as long as you believe in Cardano. If you don't, then why touch it at all? Uh, traders may again try uh, and buy this kind of bottom, and as it starts to get up to here, again, sell. That's something that traders might do. I'm not a trader, I'm an investor. Uh, but this looks like a good buy at the moment on the dollar value. But what about against Ethereum? It's not looking too bad against Ethereum. It's a little bit higher than where I'd like it. But we can see it basically came down and had a pretty nice bounce. And look where it bounced from. Some old kind of support resistance levels. So maybe it has bounced and it's already pulled back a little bit. But it's not too bad. This is my kind of, this yellow mark here says, all right, this is probably where you should start looking to buy if it gets down around here it's a little bit above that's right things look like they're rebounding and anywhere down from the yellow to the red is again that's for me buying and if it gets down to the red short of it being a dead project that tells me this is a bargain basement prices but again look at it it goes below there sometimes so not looking too bad against ethereum what about bitcoin it's not looking as good against bitcoin it's still a little bit high but again that just means maybe Bitcoin gets on a run and pushes up really high and that brings ADA's price down. Doesn't mean that ADA loses dollar value, just means that it might, uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum, depending, might have been the better buy. But at the moment, two of them look not too bad. So the Ethereum one looked at least okay, looked reasonable. The dollar value looked really good. So two out of three for me. That was enough for me to put a few dollars in. But again, a few dollars. I haven't done anything silly. Secret Network. Again, something else that I got into really, really cheap and it's just done extremely well. So now it's, I think, my fourth or fifth biggest holding. So as we can see, here's how it's doing against the dollar. This has been its general uptrend. Touch that, came down and bounced and look where it's bouncing. Almost at old sort of support resistance. It is on there. So Secret Network on the dollar not looking too bad in my book now again i'm never going to offer your financial advice you got to work out what you want to do but it looks at least okay against the dollar but it's not looking as good against ethereum really really high but maybe it's just going to outperform ethereum for the rest of this run altcoins will do that remember ethereum generally outperforms bitcoin uh, and then other altcoins will outperform Ethereum. It's just about how they do sort of at the end of the day when the bull runs all over and then whether their developers up and leave and all the rest of it will decide about how much of those gains it can hold. But a coin, and particularly a good coin, and I think SRT is one, could, I won't say can, but could well outperform Ethereum and well outperform Bitcoin. So again, you don't want to take all your information from any one chart. You've got to do some research. How's it doing against the dollar? Well, it looks like it's undervalued against the dollar. All right, that's interesting. It looks like it's really high against Ethereum though. Okay, doesn't mean a death sentence, but chances are it'll probably come down unless it's just performing well and got a lot of good things going on. My opinion, it does. You go and do your own research for Secret Network because we come over to the Bitcoin chart and it's a very similar thing. It's quite high against Bitcoin, but nowhere near as high as it's been before. It may never reach those highs again. I don't know. But again, it just looks like it's on a general uptrend at the moment. So Secret Network looks at least okay. I wouldn't say it looks amazing at the moment, but definitely looks okay. You've got to make your mind up and this is a project that I'm holding long term. You know, they were Enigma, so they've been through a whole lot of stuff and they're still here and still sort of going. So this is a long-term hold for me. All right, XRP, I'm only going to focus on the dollar chart because it always looks horrible against Bitcoin and Ethereum until it's starting to pump. But what is the trend we can see for XRP? It has been trending upwards since the crash of everything in March. And where is it at the moment? looks like it might be undervalued a little bit and again it has basically been ranging since sort of november last year ish just sideways big chops to the bottom big chops to the top so again you make your own mind up but uh xrp is one of my bigger holdings actually at 60 cents i'm 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 definitely keen to buy a little bit more. But again, I just don't know where the markets are at at the moment, so I won't go crazy. But yeah, it doesn't look too bad against the dollar. Against Ethereum and Bitcoin, it always looks horrible until it has those big pumps. And if you can take advantage of those, you can do extremely well. Right, Synthetics Network. This is that kind of DeFi that I was talking about. I have not given up on it. I really like it. Here was its general uptrend. 
Now it's broken that and it has been in sideways accumulation basically since July last year. It's pumped up really high and look where it's come down to. It is at a very sweet point. Not to say it can't go lower, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to keep that in mind. This is really like if it got down to a dollar fifty, and I don't know if it will, I think that'd scream buy to me. And again, not to say it can't go lower. I would be very aggressive on it. If it somehow manages to get down to two dollars fifty, I am absolutely buying it. And I unfortunately missed this. It got down to three dollars, and now it's four dollars. But look at this kind of wedge that's forming, and it does like to stay. Now we just got to wait and see, is it going to hold or is it going to break lower? I'm not going to be surprised if it breaks lower, ladies and gentlemen. But you go onto Synthetic Network Discord and things like that and see all the things and check their roadmap and what they've got going. It's not a chain that has died and has gone away. Is it getting much publicity at the moment? No, it's not. It's not getting much love uh, whatsoever. A few people are talking about it though, but not a whole lot. But I still like it, and considering it was at nearly $30 one time, it may never get back there, ladies and gentlemen. It literally may never get back there. I believe it will. I'm just telling you that it might not, though, because there's no guarantees in life. So if it's been at basically $30, and it's at $4, that's an 80-something percent retracement, ladies and gentlemen. That is absolutely mind-blowing. That is 84%, and it's gone down as much. There you go, 91% retracement it had from its all-time highs. And it dipped down to 88% and already making its way back up to 84%. So for me, I am dollar cost averaging into Synthetics Network. Every time uh, it gets down to these kind of levels, again, I'm not putting a whole lot of money in. It's just very small amounts. But really, about the $4 mark down to around the $2.50 mark it just screams buy to me. I wouldn't go crazy, I wouldn't throw everything in because Synthetics Network, you know, it's the whole uh, synthetic kind of thing. We've got to wait and see what happens with DeFi and all the rest of it. But I'm willing to take that risk and I like buying it at this price. Just not lots of it, just chipping away at it. How's it doing against Ethereum? Well, this is where it gets interesting. Dollar value seems okay falling, but it is now at a level that says to me, you need to be looking at it if you believe in this project because it's been here before this is an old all-time high before it went on out on its breakout and now it's starting to come back and retest it so i like it what about against bitcoin all right very similar kind of thing it seems to be holding some ground though it didn't quite get down to here but again i could then take this and go right yeah well that's not the key this is really the key where i need to be looking at it and what do you know when i move it up to there where's it finding support doesn't mean it'll hold ladies and gentlemen maybe it still has to come down to here but it's at that price range against bitcoin against uh, sorry yeah against bitcoin against ethereum and on the dollar where it's looking attractive and i like synthetics network so yes i'm going to dollar cost average into synthetics network uh at least for the kind of meantime not too much again I, there's still issues with synthetic networks around regulation and all that kind of stuff but I love the project, love the founders. They've still got roadmaps, they're constantly developing. So this is something that I'm looking at. You go and make your own mind up. I'm not telling you to buy something either way. I'm just letting you know what I'm doing. All right, last but not least, Luna. Again, I really didn't put too much money into Luna, a little bit, but it just did so well that it just rocketed up. Now have a look at Luna. So again, this is the kind of average mean price for Terra Luna. Thereabouts, again, you can move this and say, oh no, it should be up there. Oh no, it should be down here. I don't know. For me, I just get the feeling like we get a few kind of bounces around about kind of there. And so for me, it looks like it's undervalued. And again, I think this could still come down a little bit more. I think you might get down into the kind of 45-ish dollar range. Maybe even lower. Maybe you're going to see Luna come down to 17. I don't know. But at the moment, it looks reasonable. Well, let's have a look. How's it going against Ethereum? Looks really high against Ethereum. Again, maybe Ethereum and Bitcoin just get on a big run that drags that down in value against those, not loses value in dollar. Or maybe Luna is just going to outperform Ethereum and Bitcoin this season uh, and this kind of run. And for some, you know, maybe the next year or two, who knows, whatever. You make your own mind up. But just because they're high against them doesn't mean they have to come back down. 
it is more dependent on its adoption and things like that but then last but not least let's have a look at it against bitcoin it's really high so you need to make your own mind up do you like luna do you believe in it you know is there a trading opportunity there uh, and do you think it is going to continue to outperform in bitcoin and ethereum over the next however long if you do then it could be a really good buy. All right, that's a bit of a long one for me, ladies and gentlemen. There was a bit to get through. I appreciate your time. If you could do me a favor, go hit the like button and drop a comment down below. Let me know if there's something you want to cover. If you like what I'm doing, I need to improve. Uh, I know someone said, you know, I really need to work on my thumbnails. Uh, I agree, I'm just not that kind of creative person. So uh, I'd really need someone to teach me, but it is something I will sort of look into. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Some small gains there, which is nice, but there might be some more losses to come as well. We'll have to wait and see, and I'll see you next time.